we have seen different data structures starting with integers, floats, and then collections and sequences like lists, tuples, sets, strings, and dictionary. We saw many tasks related to different data structures, and a few were involving multiple data structures as well. In this lesson, we will not study anything new, but we'll see the use of different data structures in a single task. Here I have defined a movie as a dictionary. Different key value pairs describe the detail of the movie. For example, the key is title with the value as title of the movie. Year is key with the value as year of release of the movie. Then is the key runtime and the value is an integer representing the length of the movie in minutes. This is the key genre. A movie can have multiple genres so the value is a tuple which contains those genres. For example, this movie is a crime and drama movie. Then is the director key with the value as the name of the director and finally we have a key actors and the value is list of leading actors in that movie. You can see a variety of data structures are used as different values inside the dictionary. Then we have a second movie following the same structure and we have a few more. See that this movie has just one genre which is drama but still I have defined it as a tuple so that each movie has exactly same structure. You can see this comma after the only element of the tuple and I hope you remember that we need to put this after the single value tuple otherwise it will not be a tuple. In total I have defined 10 such movies and then I have a list named as my collection having these 10 movies. So my collection is a list of 10 dictionaries. Let me just print the first element of the list which we can access with the index 0. And here is the first movie displayed as a dictionary. We will be coding different queries on this list. But before that you must keep in mind that at the moment we have just 10 movies inside the list. But there can be hundreds or thousands of the movies in the list. And our code should work regardless of the size of the list. Actually, we can get different online datasets very easily in the form of CSV files or JSON files and we can convert those to our required structure like dictionary in this case. But instead of doing that on a bigger dataset and getting a huge list of such movies, I just created 10 movies manually to focus on the actual content of this lesson. And as I said earlier, whatever we will code for different queries will be applicable to a list of thousands of such movies without any extra effort. So let's see different tasks or queries on the list my collection. The first task says to display the first actor in the actor list of the last movie in the collection. We are referring to the last movie of the collection and that we can access simply with the index minus one. So this refers to the last element of the list and that is the last movie and that is a dictionary. We know different keys inside the dictionary and we are interested to get the first actor inside the actor list. The actor list is the value of this last key of the dictionary which is actors. We can access that by the key name which is actors. Now this thing refers to the value of the key actors inside the dictionary and the value is a list with the actor names. The task is to get the first actor inside this list and first element of a list is at index number 0. So this must be the first actor of the last movie inside the list my collection. Let's print that. And we get the correct output as Tom Hardy. Now the next task is to generate a list of all movie titles. You should focus on the requirement first. We need a list and that of just the movie titles which is a key of the movie dictionary. And all movie dictionaries are inside the list my collection. I will do it with the list comprehension. But in the code provided in the description, I will also add the code without list comprehension. In list comprehension, I need to iterate over all elements of the list my collection. The loop variable m is the element of the list in each iteration, which is a movie as dictionary. And we want just the title of that movie. We know we can access the title of the movie using the key title on dictionary m. So I will do that in the expression part of the list comprehension. So this will be our list. Let's print this. And you can see these are the titles of all movies inside the list my collection. The next task is to generate a list of movie titles of action movies. We know a movie dictionary has a key genre and the value is a tuple containing different genres linked with that movie. Again I will do it with the list comprehension. I will iterate over the list my collection. I need titles of the movie so I will access that in the expression part. 
but I don't need titles of all movies, so I will put a filtering condition on the genre of that movie. The genre can be accessed with the key genre and we know the value is a tuple. To check if it is an action movie, we need to see if this tuple has action as its element. So we can simply apply the membership check on this tuple. If action is one element of the genre tuple, then evaluate the expression part for each movie. Let's print this. And here we get a list of 6 movie titles out of 10 which are action movies. You can verify, for example we have Expendables 2 in this list and let's see the detail of this movie. You can see it is an action movie. Let's see the next task. It says to generate a list of all genres in the collection. Again we know genre is a tuple which we can access through the key genre. So here I am using the list comprehension. I will iterate over the list elements. M is one element of the list which is a dictionary. From inside each dictionary, I need to access this tuple and actually I need to get each of the tuple element one by one and put that into a list. The tuple is also iterable, so I can have another for loop on the key genre of the dictionary M. The loop variable g will be one genre inside the genre tuple in each iteration. So in the expression part, I will simply place g. Let's print the result. Here we get a flat list and the elements are different genres for each movie in my collection list. You can see many repetitions here because different movies have different genres in common. Of course, we should remove all duplicate values from the list even if it is not mentioned in the task but it's very obvious. And for such case, set data type is more suitable because sets don't allow duplicate entries. So instead of list comprehension, I can have a set comprehension here. For that, I will replace the square brackets with the curly braces and now it is a set. I will not have any duplicate. And now I will convert this set to a list using the list constructor since the requirement was to have a list of all genres. And now you can see that we have just 6 values inside this list. The next task is to generate a list of all actors who have worked with the director Christopher Nolan. We know that we have a key value pair with the key as director and value as the name of the director. So for this task we will scan all movies and we'll see if the name of the director is Christopher Nolan. And if that is the case, we should iterate over this list of actors and place each of that inside the list. Moreover, you should have in mind that there can be more than one movies directed by this director in my collection list. I will use the list comprehension and will iterate over the movies. Then I will iterate over the actors list of the movie M. Loop variable A is one actor inside the actors list, so I will write A in the expression part. This is going to pick each actor from each movie inside the list. But I want the actors of just the movies directed by Christopher Nolan. So I will put a filtering condition as director of the movie M is Christopher Nolan. Let's print it. And here we get the list of actors who have worked with Christopher Nolan. Let's verify that. Here we have the director we are interested in and you can verify these actors are there in our output list. We have few more actors in the output list, so there must be some other movie of the same director. And here we have another movie with the same director. And these actors are there in the output list. So we got correct result, but there can be a case that this director has many movies in the my collection list and there will be a chance that one actor played role in more than one of his movies. And in that case, we will have repetition of actors in the generated list. So it's better to take care of it and the solution is to have set instead of list comprehension. And then we will convert the set to a list. We get the same result but the order is different because that's the inherent property of the set that it is unordered collection of elements.
Now the next task is to create a dictionary with keys as director name and value as list of his movie titles. It will be a bit complex to use dictionary comprehension for this case, so I will use the simple approach. I will start with the empty dictionary. Now I will iterate over the my collection list. Inside the loop I will pick the director of the movie M and will make that as key of the dictionary D. Value should be list of his movie titles. One obvious movie of this director is the same movie M, so I will assign the title of this movie M as the value. I actually should put this inside a list so that I could append any other movie inside the list. Now think that how we can add other movies of the same director into this list. When the director is appearing for the first time inside the my collection list, then for sure it is his first movie inside the list, so this statement is correct. But we should apply a condition that a director name is not already inside the dictionary D. And else means the director and of course his movie is already inside the dictionary and this movie M is another movie of the same director. So in that case we should append this movie title into the already existing list of his movies. Let's print the dictionary D. This is name of a director and the value is list having just one movie name. Then is director Christopher Nolan and the value is a list of two movie titles. And so on the other key values. Now the next task is to create a dictionary with keys as actor names and value as number of his movies. Let's create an empty dictionary. Now for each movie M inside the list my collection, I need to get the individual actor names which is inside a list with the key actors. So I must iterate over this list now. For each actor inside the actor list, I will add a key value pair inside a dictionary D. Key will be the name of the actor which is the loop variable A. The value will be 1 because we need the count of his movies. But there can be more occurrences of one actor in multiple movies. So we can say that if that actor is not already inside the dictionary D, it means it is his first movie inside the my collection list. So the count should be 1. And else means he is already in the dictionary. So we should increment the value by 1. Let's see the result. And here we have the dictionary. Most of the actors have one movie, but see this Jason Statham, which is having a count as 3. Tom Hardy count of movies is 2. Next task is to create a dictionary with keys as genre and values as list of movie titles of that genre. Genre inside the movie dictionary is a tuple. Again we will start with an empty dictionary. Then on each movie inside the list which is a dictionary, we want to iterate over each element of the key genre. Now I hope you can understand the point that first we will check if the genre which is the loop variable G is not already inside the dictionary D. Then we will add one key value pair inside the dictionary D. Key will be the genre and value will be the title of the movie. Else means the genre is already inside the dictionary, so we will append the movie title in the value list. This should be a list so that we could append more titles later on. I will print the result as different key value pairs on separate lines. It should be D dot items to get both keys and values. For genre crime, this is the list of movies. For drama, this is the list and so on for each possible genre. We are left with two tasks. This task says to generate a list of actors who have worked in both drama and action movies. This task is a bit tricky. 
Instead of list comprehension, I will use simple approach for better understanding. I will start with empty list. Then of course I will iterate over the my collection list. In each movie dictionary, I will iterate over the list of actors inside it. And I will check the condition if the movie genre is drama and action. Then I will append that actor into the list A. We get this result. Apparently it looks fine but it is not correct. See this condition carefully. What it means is that the movie M has drama and action both in its genre tuple. But the task was to get the actors who have worked in both drama and action movies but not necessarily the single movie having both genres. This will give list of actors who have worked in some movie that is both drama and action. Let me show you the movie. And this is the movie that has both action and drama in its tuple of genre. And the result we saw earlier was list of its actors. Before I correct the logic, let me show you that even if this is what we want to get, instead of testing the membership of two values inside the tuple genre, we can create a set of two genres we are interested in. And then we can apply the is subset method of the set class for subset check of this set with the genre tuple, which will return true when this set is subset of the input table, meaning both action and drama is present inside the tuple. We see the same previous result. But as I said, it is not a correct logic. What we should do is that we will first create a list of all actors who have worked in the action movies. There can be duplicate entries of actors, so we should have a set instead of list. Then we can create a set of actors who have worked in drama movies. Now simply the intersection of these two sets will be the actors who have worked in both action movies and drama movies. Let's convert that to a list and print the result. These are the two lists. The first is for this list A which we said is a wrong logic and then is a the second result and you can see it has more entries. Let me write the comments for you as reference. Now inside the movie dictionary we have two numeric values as well, one as year and other as runtime in minutes. There can be many interesting tasks based on these numeric values, for example finding the oldest movie inside the list or finding the longest movie inside the list or maybe sorting the list based on the runtime, etc. I will have a separate video on sorting and min-max function where I will show how we can use these functions efficiently and there I will use this list of movies. But for now we can have a quite simple task as to find the total runtime of all movies inside the collection. I will start with a variable to hold the value of the total runtime and will initialize that to 0. Then for each movie I will access the runtime key and will add the value in variable t. So 1287 minutes is total runtime of all movies inside list my collection. So that's all from this lesson. Thanks for watching.